plump up overnight and go. So I actually got ready this morning to go out to yoga. I just feel like this morning I wasn't really going for the right reasons. I felt like I really had to go and I was like, do I really want to go or do I just want to lie in bed? Like, can I really be bothered? And I literally went back and forth, back and forth. But I really want yoga to be something to be enjoyed and not to be like something to compensate for feeling bad about something else. So I, know, I just didn't think I was in the right frame of mind to go. So I went and got my breakfast instead. And shock, I've got overnight oats, which I'm completely obsessed with. <laughs> Last night we went to the cinema to watch The Post, which is really good. Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep, awesome in it. Really good film. And we got a huge popcorn, a huge caramel popcorn, which we love to do. The popcorn here is amazing. I don't know how they do it. It's like they melt Mars bar over it or something, but it's like warm and caramelly and oh, it's just so good. And we used to go all the time and we'd sit there with a large and literally demolish it. I'm not joking, we're like animals, like face first into the popcorn. We always joke that it literally must be like laced with cocaine or something because you just can't stop. It's like, oh, so good. But we haven't been able to do it for ages because I've just been, it's not in my plan or I'm too scared of popcorn, whatever. I've not been able to do it. And last night we did it for the first time in ages and it was so nice. But then of course, with anything like that, you've got the side of you that loves it and thinks that was such a nice living life thing to do. And then that other side of you that's like, but now you're gonna get fat, you've just eaten a fear food. So I think that's why I woke up this morning like, now you have to go and do this. You have to get up today and go to yoga and burn this off and leave this out, compensate with this and like, Ah, oh, it's just, I know there's no point in challenging these things if you're then gonna go and compensate for it afterwards. Hang on, I really find it hard to eat and talk still. So in my head, I'm definitely like, you're gonna get fat from this popcorn now. It is big, like we have a big, large popcorn. But then that is what I want to be able to do in life. And I don't want to recover and always have to stick to the minimals or always stick to a food plan. Like, to be honest, sometimes I wanna be able to overeat and be fine with that because that is life. Like Christmas, cinema popcorn, going on holiday, being hungover, sometimes just want a, a McDonald's. Like. I don't want to recover with foods that I still can't eat or never being able to go over this amount of calories in a day. So like recovery to me is just total freedom around food where there are no foods that are off limits. Like I won't eat them all the time. I'm not gonna eat McDonald's breakfast, lunch and dinner, but sometimes I want to. So I don't want to always have to eat the minimums or less than somebody else or stick rigidly to a plan. Like sometimes I might be hungrier than someone else. And I don't know, I might go to the cinema and Brendan will be like, I don't really fancy popcorn today. And I'll be like, get this girl a popcorn. I'm gonna smash a popcorn. <laughs> And that's okay, like, if anything, I actually think that's quite cool. I've got quite a lot of respect for people that are just like, I'm hungry, I'm having a burger, screw the lot of you. <laughs> so, gonna have my breakfast. Oh, and watch a YouTube vlog. Hang on, I have to go and get my laptop. Okay, so she's got a new vlog out, so that's awesome. Gonna watch that. additional thing that you put in so in my mind I'm always like leave those bits out don't put that in don't pour the maple syrup on the top overnight oats is a really challenging food to make because there's so many different things that need to go in it and even when I'm eating it I've left all the raisins thinking of oh, just in case you want to leave them at the end like even though I know I'm gonna eat it all like why have I done that oh damn it I forgot to take a picture of it for Instagram <laughs> I just said that sentence Never mind. That's my worry with Instagram is that you'll only be eating so you can take a beautiful picture of your food. And if you haven't done it, have you even eaten it? So never mind. Food's there for enjoyment, not just for posting pretty little pictures on Instagram. That 
was so nice. I could honestly eat the whole thing again. I don't know how I can go from thinking like, you need to go out and exercise to burn something off, to eating something and then wanting to eat it 10 times, like, ah. So then I'm gonna have my snack and lunch and snack and whatever. So I know my body's gonna learn like, okay, this food does come regularly. I don't need to keep making, I wanna eat it all, all the time, but. So I think I'm gonna tidy the apartment now and then go into a food shop. Really fun life of being an adult because we have absolutely no food in. And I'll meet a friend for lunch later and I guess I'll record again after that. So I've just been for lunch with my friend and surprise, surprise, on the way back, I have been to Starbucks. And this one is a white mocha. I still definitely like the regular chocolate mocha best, but nice to try the different ones. <laughs> Yum. So it was really nice to go for lunch with my friend. Whenever we used to go out for lunch, I'd always have to order a special Meg portion of something. Like whatever the menu said it came with, I'd always be like, okay, that's great, but can I have it without this, without this? Can you swap this for this? So it's really nice to be able to go to cafes and restaurants and just be like, whatever, however it comes. So yeah, that's definitely come with practice recently and just doing it again and again, every weekend going for lunch with people. And yeah, like I said, now I don't have that anxiety when I go, I know that I'll be able to order something. But it's sociable, it's nice to just fit in and order the same things as people. Another thing that scares me about going for lunch is that it might be more than my food plan. It might be more than I was supposed to have for lunch. But again, through just doing it and practicing it, I'm just not that scared of that anymore. I'm just realizing that like, that actually doesn't matter and I'm still fine, like I can do it and look, I'm still here to tell the tale, I still haven't got fat. So you really just have to do it to see that the world doesn't end and your worst fears don't come true from going slightly over your meal plan. It's definitely taken me time to get to that point. And when I was first on my meal plan, I was so rigid, like I would not go a calorie over. I actually ate the same things every single day as well. That's just what I needed at first. I, I was that rigid, I was that set in my ways. And I think meal plans are one of those big points in recovery, like, are they a good thing? Should you calorie count? Should you have a prescribed meal plan? Should someone else control your food for you? It's one of those big, like, hard to answer questions really related to recovery. But I think in my opinion, and certainly like just based on my own experience really, at first you really do need that help in some form. Like the fact is you've still got anorexia in your head and it's really not your fault. Like you can be so clear on what your objectives are, but it's almost like we're programmed and this thing has been there for so long and it's so well learned. Put this down, it's getting really cold. This it's so well learnt now, all of like your phobias and your rules and your rituals and the food groups that you won't touch, the times you'll eat, whatever it is, they're so well practiced and so ingrained in your head that when you come to make those recovery decisions, it's really difficult to do so. With this relapse, for example, once I'd accepted that there was a problem and I knew I needed to gain weight again, I thought, oh, it's fine, I'll be able to do that. I've done this before, I know what I'm doing, I've seen dietitians before, let me do it. And I went away to try and gain some weight and I just couldn't do it. And it was almost like automatic. Anorexia was just automatic in my thoughts. So like, I'd always choose the lowest calorie option. I'd always buy low fat. I'd leave bits and bobs out of recipes. If I went to a restaurant, I'd have to order it without this, that and the other. So I actually started seeing a dietitian and got her to take total control of my food. I didn't want to go into calorie counting again because I have been in calorie counting hells in the past and just didn't want that back in my life. So, and I also handed a lot of food prep over to my fiance because again, it was just another thing that I was struggling to make the right choices with. So at first I think any control that can be taken away from you and any decisions that can be taken away from you is so helpful because it just lessens the opportunity for anorexia to get in. And like I said, that's re it's really not your fault. Like with all the best intentions in the world, it's just been so long that you've had this thing in your head that you've become so programmed and hardwired to take its decision paths that it's hard to suddenly decide I'm gonna recover and then be able to make all the right choices. So yeah, definitely at first, I think having some help in place is great, whether it's a dietitian, parent, partner, friend, whatever it is, just someone who can help take some of that control away from you and help make some of those decisions when you're not quite able to yet. I've certainly found that I've naturally just started getting a bit more relaxed and a bit more ready to take it on myself. And I'm definitely not there, but I can feel that like meanness in me is wanting to do it a bit more. And I think everyone's got a them in them. Like I've got a little me in me. You guys have got a little you in you, but I've also got a lot of anorexia in me. And as much as I would love to get off a diet plan now, I think there's still too much of that there and it would still sneak its way in. And it's so crafty how it gets back in. And then it's easy to get that thing like, oh, but you should be better than this by now. You're this weight, why can't you do this? Or at this point in your recovery, you should be able to do this or so-and-so can do this. There are so many expectations on like 
us and our bodies and our recovery and like just no like it is what it is you are where you are ultimately i'm still going to be recovered and able to do these things and but at the moment i'm just still not quite there and, and if you still need help you still need help and you'll get to a point where you don't but right now maybe you just do it's all separated <laughs> that's the stuff <laughs> i've definitely noticed just in the last couple of weeks that i've become more relaxed around like my food decisions things like getting starbucks or going out for lunch or getting popcorn at the cinema it doesn't bother me as much so like generally i haven't been making my lunch recently i've handed that over to brendan just like i said take that control away from me take those decisions away from me and then some days recently i've just felt a lot more able to do it and i haven't come to it and been like just leave that out or just have one of those or put that in instead or compensate with this now so that you can have that later i just haven't had those thoughts as much and that's great so i've been able to make my own lunch but for some reason one day this week i was making my lunch before work and all of these thoughts just flooded in like well, they've just put a chocolate bar into your diet plan, so you should take something out of this now to make up for that then. Or last week when you gained weight, it was because of that, so you should leave that out. And I was just like, oh my God, all these thoughts were driving me crazy. And some of them were proper sneaky as well. Like, that's going to make you gain over the amount you're supposed to gain. So just leave that out and you'll gain perfectly on target. Things that are almost trying to convince you it's actually a recovery decision, but it's really not. Like, it's so anorexia just trying to worm its way back in. And I know you have to cut those out straight away. Like, if you start even entertaining one of those thoughts, it will just take hold and spiral and spiral. And I was literally in the kitchen this week, like, between the fridge, the cupboard, the fridge, my lunchbox, like totally i did not know what to do and i was just like thoughts 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 i call it food paralysis like where you're literally stuck to the spot because you cannot move because you're trying to make a food decision and you've got so many competing thoughts that you're like oh my god i don't know what to do so in the end i had to go and ask brendan i had to just be like i cannot make my lunch today please go and make my lunch for me and like yeah it's a bit of a shame it's a bit disappointing but it is what it is and in the future i won't need that i'll be able to do it on my own but right now i'm just not completely able all the time and i can so notice in me certain obsessions and rules around food get worse as i go down in weight and get better as i go up in weight like a really weird example of one is sometimes i have an obsession with the temperature of food literally anorexia will find anything related with food to make you obsess about so this, for example, which is slightly melted because of the sun. If I was lower in weight, that would drive me insane. Like if I had cold foods, they had to be freezing. If I had warm foods, they had to be boiling. I would not touch foods in the middle of those temperature zones, which is quite a bizarre obsession, but there we go. And I can definitely notice as my weight goes down, that becomes more and more important to me. And if something's not the right temperature, I just can't eat it. But then as my weight gets better, I'm just a bit like, oh, give a shit. Like it's not the right temperature, so what? <laughs> It just doesn't matter as much. I just don't care. Like, life's too short to be worrying about has my drink melted a little bit or is my dinner boiling hot or is my yoghurt freezing cold? Like, I'm practicing these things and gaining a bit of weight. Like I said, they just all come together to get you to a point where you just don't mind as much anymore and you're ready to take it on a bit more yourself. And that you and you is like, I can do this now. I'm here. Let me have a go. That was really such a long ramble, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you can hear all the cars behind me, but I'm parked at like a little go-karting place next to Starbucks. And I think they must have just started a go-karting session because I can hear them all going round behind me. Oh, this is so yum. <laughs> it's so sweet and sickly, but I absolutely love it. I'm actually gonna go and treat myself to a massage this afternoon because, you know, self-love and all that. Another thing my psychologist does is get you to do one thing nice for yourself every day. So a massage can be my nice thing today. <laughs> that was really sweet and quite sickly, but it was really tasty. I know it's like loads of milk as well, so it's got to be all good for my bones. And I know it's all goodness, but I feel a little bit sick. But anyway, I'm going to leave now and go and get my massage and then I'll probably record again after. Oh my god, look at what I picked up on my way home. Carrot cake! Carrot cake! So beautiful! Oh, it's so good! Oh, I've got a little cat as well. Good safe. The sun's creeping round. My eyes water.
it's so bad when I'm in the sun. Not like crying over my carrot cake. Those are watering eyes. <laughs> craving that for weeks i'm not joking since i first started making carrot cake overnight oats i've been like they want a slice of carrot cake and i actually don't feel like i could eat that again which is really nice i feel like that was nice and now i'm full and that's fine so that's progress i guess but that's not to say tomorrow i'm not going to want a slice of carrot cake again and then the next day and then the next day like if your body wants it, your body wants it, you're gonna get cravings. So the best thing is just to honor them. And then I know if I do just keep giving my body what it wants, the cravings will go. So I'm filming in Brendan's car because I met some friends last night and had too much wine and I had to leave my car behind. So I have to go and pick it up today. Um, but I've just come to meet a friend for lunch. I've literally got five minutes before I go and meet her, but I wanted to record quickly because ever since I finished that carrot cake yesterday, I have been having the biggest struggle and I just feel so guilty and so fat and so tempted to run back to anorexia i can't tell you like everything in me just wants to now restrict to make up for having had the carrot cake uh today i just well i'm hungover which probably doesn't help but i just feel so shit and it is so hard to keep going and not turn back to it and like and the problem is i know anorexia right now would make me feel better if i did restrict i would stop feeling as guilty about having had that cake and it, it does work in the short term but I know it is just a short term fix, like it, it gives you immediate relief now, it makes you feel better now, but I know long term it's just going to keep me in the illness. It's like short term relief, long term anorexia, like you'll just stay in the cycle for the rest of your life. So I'm sorry to end the video on like a down thing, but I just think this is real, like recovery is not going to feel good all the time. In fact, far from it, it feels proper shite right now. And it's so hard because it's so convincing right now in my head and it feels so right and I feel so guilty and all I want to do is fix it. So I'm trying so hard to do opposite actions, like whatever I'm tempted to do, just do the total opposite. Like have my dinner last night, go for drinks with friends, meet my friend for lunch now. And the whole way here in the car I've been like prepping myself for this lunch. Like order off the menu, do not have a salad, eat the whole thing. Order off the menu, do not have a salad, eat the whole thing. I'm literally like telling myself this again and again and again, like it's okay, anorexia is lying, not gonna get fat, I don't need to fix the carrot cake. And also, even if my friend orders a salad, do not order a salad, like she can order a salad, she doesn't have anorexia, she's in a position where she's fine to, she doesn't have a shit little thing in her head telling her she has to. So whatever she orders, I'm just gonna order a proper meal, eat the whole thing, it's okay if I eat more than her, I am recovering from anorexia and I need to keep fighting this stupid shitty thing in my head so that I don't have it anymore. Oh, it's so hard. Like, anorexia is such a fucking shit. It's literally so hard. I'm really sorry. Yesterday I was so positive, but it's just not going to be every day. And I'm probably going to feel shit for the rest of the day, to be honest. But I just, I know I don't want anorexia for the rest of my life. I know I need to break that cycle. So I'm going to go and see my friend. I really hope people are having a good day and honestly if you're not you might not be you might be having a struggle as well or feeling guilty about something you've eaten but if you don't go against it and do opposite actions you'll just feel like that for the rest of your life and you'll never have the freedom from this to like push through the shit like you can do it it feels horrible it's so hard you feel so guilty but like you just have to it's part of recovery and you won't always this won't be forever that's what i keep telling myself like if this is just for now i won't feel like this for the rest of my life but I do just have to push through the shit now to get to a better side of things. So take care everyone and I will record again soon. But please like, like my video, subscribe to the channel, comment below if there's something you want me to record on. I'll leave my Instagram below. I've actually had a couple of people ask for Q&A videos, so I might do one of those soon. But I hope you liked it and I hope everyone's having a good day and challenging these things that you're terrified of because it's the only way that you'll stop being scared of them and that you'll be able to do them. And I'll record again soon.